Five o'clock. At this time, I will call the uh, February Board of Education meeting for the Idaho State Schools into session. The chair would entertain a motion to go into closed session for personnel and property. And property. Mr. Chairman, according to North Carolina General Statute 143-318 decimal 11, I make a motion that the board enter into closed session to discuss personnel and property and to preserve the client attorney-client privilege. I have a motion and a second. The board to go into closed session. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. The board is now in closed session. Thank you.
time, the chair would entertain a motion to go back into open session. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a motion to second to return to open session. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Our Idaho State Board of Education is now in regular session. It is our policy to begin our meetings with a moment of silence in which the board members, staff, and guests may privately reflect in their own way on the business of this meeting. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. At this time, please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. The colors will be presented by the Career Academy and Technical School Fire, to, Academy. Fire Academy students. Uh, this, this is their first time out. They look sharp, and we're very, very proud of them. Gentlemen, present the colors. This uh, Cats Academy was started at senior high school one year and then moved to Mr. Rogers, Mr. Claude Felter at the back, Mr. Larry Rogers, principal at Cats, and Mr. Gerald Claude Felter. Would he hide? Where'd he go? Yeah, he is. There he is. Okay. Under his direction, so appreciate both y'all. Good job. Yeah. Before we move into our agenda, I would like to clarify our public comment sign-up procedure, be more aligned with our policy, but to allow everyone the opportunity to speak, we will keep our public comment sign-up sheet out front until we're ready to open the floor for public comment. Anyone wishing to speak uh, to the board must sign up prior to that time. There will be no additional sign-ups once public comment starts. While the board welcomes our shareholders' views, please remember comments should not be slanderous or personal in nature. The board does not usually respond to public comments. To be fair to everyone, comments are limited to three minutes. Thank you. Members of the board, Mr. Johnson, do we have any changes to the agenda? Yes, sir. Under Roman numeral four, recognitions, tonight we have Troutman Elementary School and their child nutrition staff here. Uh, Ms. Tina Wilson is going to be doing a recognition. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Any other any other corrections or changes to the agenda? Move the agenda be approved with one addition and the recognition. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Uh, 
and the minutes. Uh, at this time, is there any uh, discussion? I have a motion and a second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. At this point in time, we will move into the recognitions. I'm sorry. I jumped way ahead of you, didn't I? I left you completely out. <laughs> That's we, okay. we are just, just, we are rolling here today. I, everybody's excited. We might get out early. We forgot you, Dr. Lesane, uh, and we've already approved everything else, but why don't you tell us anything we need to know about the consent agenda, uh, resignations and retirements and terminations and absence of lease. Well, Mr. Page, along with Mr. Johnson, members of the board, you've had the opportunity to review the February personnel report. I would make a note on this report. You will notice that in comparison to the agenda, your first item starts with A. It should start with B and move forward from there. So I would just um, like for you to note that um, correction to the February personnel report. Are there any questions that I can answer? No, ma'am, and I apologize. I had turned my page uh, for the change of recognitions and just left you right off. Oh, that's all right. So I got on page <laughs> two before I should have. Thank you. Uh, we I need my motion, Mr. Chairman, to include the uh, personnel report. Thank you, since I included that in the... the uh, and the minutes. And the minutes. I think to make everything nice and neat here, we will... Uh, Revote on that with the uh, change. So, for the record, we are now voting on the. Do what? I need a second on the minutes. Okay. I have a motion to approve uh, the minutes and the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. That cleans that up, I hope. Yeah. Uh, just the approval of the agenda and some minutes. We didn't know where they were from. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they're listed on our agendas. That's right. So uh, that'll teach me to turn the page and be in a hurry. I tell you, I got excited. Mr. Johnson said we didn't need a closed session tonight. So That's the wrong glasses. What you yeah, said. I know it. I had to borrow somebody's glasses. Uh, now, at this time, Mr. Johnson, we will move into the uh, recognitions. I think uh, Ms. Uh, Tina Wilson, our Director of Child Nutrition, will yes, come hear. forward and present this report for you. Good evening. I'm excited to be here tonight to recognize Troutman Elementary for the second year in a row to uh, get awarded the Golden Achievement Award for um, USDA Best Practice. And just for a little bit on the Golden Achievement Award, it is a program that is a set of criteria designed to recognize the great accomplishments in a single school cafeteria. And the purpose of this award is to recognize and promote excellence in our schools. And Troutman has done it exceedingly over the last two years. And to go along with this award, these uh, staff have to do exceed in four different standards. They are nutrition, operations, administrations, and communications and marketing. And not only does the staff work hard every day in all our schools, but Troutman Elementary, they have done professional standards on all these sets of criteria throughout the school year to earn their standards in each of these criteria, in addition to the job they do feeding our students every day. And along with that, uh, we need the principal's support, and we have that fully. Along with uh, this criteria ties in also with physical education. So we need the support of the PE staff. And that staff there at Trapman Elementary, they far exceed and go above and beyond for our students each and every day. And I really appreciate the teamwork that is uh, shown throughout that school each and every day. So. I would like, if somebody would help me hand out these certificates, I have my staff here to recognize them tonight.
have my list here, Martin. All right. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize the cafeteria manager at Troutman Elementary, Miss Sharon Saunders. And the principal, Miss Kimberly Cressman. And I don't believe our assistant principal is here, Miss Heather Delavute, I believe, how you pronounce that. Okay. And then physical education teacher, Miss Donette Clendenin. And our uh, school nutrition elementary supervisor, Miss Lisa Flowers. And then our cafeteria staff, Miss Patricia Hapes. believe Ricky Neff is here. Neither is she. Okay. Barbara Stanley. Susan White. Jean Wall. Now I'm going to get this right this year, I hope. Laquita Vandenberg. Did I do it? <laughs> and ladies, I want to thank you for your continued dedication to our school nutrition, and most of all, to our children, our little states with schools, and those children at your school. I'd also like to uh, congratulate Miss Wilson. She had a trailer pull in this, this morning, something she's been looking for, trying to get a, a cooler freezer trailer for food service, and that was delivered this morning. Uh, they could have used it twice last week. Uh, she is uh, doing some things. I mean, it will just be a great addition to uh, when they have a freezer and cooler go down into school, they can immediately have one on site. Uh, we'll be saving a tremendous amount of labor and moving product around. So uh, she was very excited this morning when her freezer finally showed up. She'd been trying to get it for about a year. So congratulations on that. Thank you for the job you do and all our, all our food service people all over our system. They do a wonderful job. At this time, we'll move into our non-consent agenda. Uh, Dr. Taylor and, and, and Dr. Blattner, I would like to ask, and I'm going to ask the board, if there was anyone here to speak on the devices uh, at the end of the meeting. If they were, I was going to suggest we allow them to speak before we take a vote. Is there anyone here? 
Okay, never mind. Very good. So thank you. Okay, Mr. Page, Mr. Johnson, members of the board, uh, Dr. Blattner and the Technology Refresh Committee, um, and I re uh, presented information um, and a recommendation to you at the January Committee of the whole meeting. Uh, we did discuss that in further detail Monday evening uh, of last week at our Committee of the Whole for February. It is the recommendation of the committee uh, that we purchase um, devices for our elementary schools at a ratio of one to two. And we did clarify that um, last week um, and last month that the kindergarten through second grade would be iPads without a keyboard at a one to two ratio, grades three and four. iPads with a keyboard at a one to two ratio. Fifth grades would be a mix of iPads and MacBook Airs. Then at the 612 level, the recommendation would be MacBook Airs at a one to one ratio. And then all teachers at the elementary level would receive an iPad and a MacBook Air, and the 612 teachers would receive um, the MacBook Air at a one-to-one -one ratio as well. We've heard a lot of very positive comments. I think our teachers and our students are excited about the opportunities as we move forward. Um, we did also share with you the total cost of the refresh. Um, it was, uh, I believe, 12, a little over $12.8 million over, that would be spread over a three-year period at a 0% interest rate. Um, that basically, over that time, we would use the devices for four years, and they would be paid for over three years, equates to about 90 cents per day uh, per student. Um, and I think a couple of the, the key factors to consider is in the past, we have had elementary leases and secondary leases um, paying for our computers. And what this lease does is it does combine it all into one. We are, are able to, uh, with that volume discount, to leverage that to get more computers than we have had in the past at a lesser cost than we have paid in the past. So I think we certainly are getting a good uh, return for investment. So we certainly would be glad to answer any questions that you may have, and we do um, ask the board um, to officially vote on this this evening. We do have to take this forward to the county commissioners for a vote. And as we discussed in the committee of the whole, if uh, we bring this to a vote this evening, we also want to sell the current assets we have. If you put that vote with this, um, it would prevent us from having to do two votes. And I'm sorry I missed the committee of the whole <coughs> meeting last so, week. Okay. Um, just a quick question on the um, technology usage fees. Mm -hmm. um, how much is that per student? $50. Okay, and there's considerations for free and reduced? Yes, there is. Okay, and this number is, is pretty accurate based on um, based on what it was yes. for the past couple of years? Okay. Yes, it is. All right. That is the same number we've used before, isn't it? Mm -hmm. $50? Yes. yes. Nothing is, uh, no, we had, um, yeah, it's, nothing has changed with that, and we have um, a process for those who are in free and reduced to have reduced, uh, reduced fees with that. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, we are buying these computers. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I just wanted to clear that up because in the media it had we were going to lease them, and I knew that was wrong. It is a lease to a $1 purchase, so for $1 at the end of the lease, we own all the equipment. Correct. Okay. Uh, I've labored over this decision. When I ran for office, I told the voters that I would put their children first. And the choice is a warm classroom or a computer. And that's what it comes down to, because I have asked if we could do this in stages and had met opposition. I asked if the computers had made our EOC scores better and not received a positive answer. Therefore, since two schools that need HVAC work are in my district, I intend to vote against this unless we can do it in phases. Thank you. If there's not, not any other comment, I make the motion that we accept the recommendations of the refresh committee and put into place the purchase or the purchase lease of these devices. Also at the same time, sell the ones that we have so that we can apply that to the total cost. Uh, that's my motion. Second, Mr. Chairman. The motion is, is stated does not parallel with the plan of purchase of these devices. Uh, well, 
uh, the motion is to accept the recommendation of the committee. Yes, sir, and you stated to, uh, I'm just making sure we don't get an issue here. Okay. Ms. White, would you step up, please? <clears throat> did you did you feel that that motion as stated? Well, I think with the way it was literally stated is not how it will literally be applied in reality. When we sell the devices, the proceeds will not offset the cost of these new devices. The proceeds will be reallocated to the funds with which the first lease incurred the expense to pay. If that makes sense, I don't really state, state that correctly. But the second lease is going to be paid with capital outlay funds. The first lease was not paid. A little bit was paid with capital outlay funds. So when we sell the devices, the proceeds will be allocated pro radically to the sources that usually that originally incurred the expense for the first lease. So you really just, bottom line, you want to approve the resale, the sale of the old devices, period. Right. And I, then I'm not you'll, designating at all where that's going to go. That's already been outlined. Uh, I think if it goes up against the cost, fine. If it goes up against something in two years, I, I really don't. Okay, this whole thing I, is I have not formally introduced the motion. At this time, I'm going to ask you to restate your motion, Mr. Kelly. How would you like? I mean, what I'm stating is. Just leave that little part out. Just I'll just leave the last part out? Fine. About, about where that money goes. Oh, I'm Just sorry. authorize the I'm disposal. Sorry. If, I, if I tried to designate where you're going to put the money, I'm sorry. My motion is to accept the recommendation of the refresh committee that worked on this for so long, which is the purchase of the devices that we can use into the classrooms this fall or whenever we get them. That's my motion. And to sell. And, and, to, sell. and to sell the other devices that we have at this time. Mm. Right. There we go. Very good. <laughs> and that's my second. And that's the second. Now, I will, I will formally introduce this motion and put it on the floor that Mr. Kelly has uh, endorsed the selling the purchasing as the staff has recommended and to approve the selling of the old devices. Uh, any further discussion? I kind of felt like Mr. Howell did at first until till Dr. Blattner and I talked Friday. And when you said what you said, if we put this off to two more years, how much more it's going to cost us. So with you, what you explained to me Friday, I have changed to where I support what you have done with this. And I see we can save in, in two years how much we're going to save. So I appreciate your time Friday at the, what are we all having out there, a roundtable discussion? Or mid-year review. Yeah, mid-year, whatever. But, you know, that we spent a lot of time in the corner, and uh, I appreciate your time on that. So you you convinced me, and uh, I think we'll save enough money in two years that we'll see the benefits. Well, I, too, had talked about the possibility of doing this in phases and uh, the fact that we're getting zero percent interest and we're putting this out over three years basically we're getting them all now we're paying for them in phases so I think that made me feel much better about it uh, there's no doubt we're getting uh, a lot more for our bang this time than we got last time there's no doubt that the committee in which two board members were on left no doubt of what they wanted. There was a, they field tested various computers. Uh, the people spoke, the teachers spoke, the students spoke. I feel like we've been, the committee did an excellent job of uh, bringing us a, a usable plan. Uh, it still hurts <laughs> to spend that money. It still hurts. But when you really look at it like you've done it, when we look at you break it down per student. When you got 20,000 students, it's, it's, it, it, things, no matter what you buy for that many students, it's going to cost a lot of money. I am thrilled that we're doubling or more than doubling some of our elementary uh, computers. Uh, that was somewhere we were very short in. I'm glad that we've been able to provide basically what the elementary teachers have asked for. Uh, so I think it's a, a good overall uh, the proposal, I think, is a good proposal, and uh, I look forward uh, to the vote. Uh, and, and I just wanted to say, too, you know, the thing that really sold me was the um, the number of devices that we got for the last time, and then we've got this new lease at a less cost. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I also think the learning curve 
you know, we would have to start back at square one, you know, with the, with the teachers and the staff and the students, you know, learning new systems. And, and they've already got their programs. They kind of know already they're, they're on a roll. And um, that was a big decision point for me, too. I just want to echo one sentiment. The, uh, the uh, technical committee, that, the technology committee that worked on this, they, it was, they had some heartache trying to make it work, too. And uh, they, they went through that, but the, with the uh, inclusion of, of the elementary and the stuff that they did there, I think they did an excellent job. And uh, I, that's not easy because that's, that's, there's a lot of concerns from all the different grades that were there and what kind of devices. So I think it, it, they worked together as a team from uh, all different uh, levels of the school system, and, and I think they, they do need uh, credit for that and make sure and thank all the people for, on the committee from the board or at least for my position. I will not speak for the board, but for my position because I think they did a really good job, their due diligence. And uh, that's all I have to say. I just want to make sure they got credit. Let me, let me mention, too, that if you look at the total way in which we're going to fund this, this process, I'm not in opposition at all with Mr. Howell's uh, statement. We need funding for things that we're doing in the capital area. But we're so far behind there that it's not even funny to talk about it. And that's very real, and it's going to continue. And it gets broader. It seems like every time we bring it up, we talk to the people that deal with that. But at this time and this place, for all the reasons that we have, I think this is the thing to do in reference to the devices, and we've simply got to try to find the funding to do the other things. The partic uh, particular projects that he mentions yeah, need to be at the top of our list, uh, but I don't think we can hold off on this <coughs> because of other things that we also do need. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, echo everything that's been said by all, and particularly to thank the committee. I do challenge, though, the committee. I challenge our administration staff, our curriculum folks, to please periodically show us how it is improving instruction. Please challenge the teachers on your committee to sell it to the teachers as an instructional tool for what it really is to be used for and to get them to see that it does benefit kids in the long run, long run and that scores do improve. Uh, so please come back with us periodically and show us how it's being used uh, to improve instruction and of course when the end of school is here show us how it helped uh, to improve test scores please yeah, and we'd be happy to have teachers that would would love to come and share that with you so we just uh, need to coordinate that with mr page as we're yeah building and that be sure community. to have those teachers to sell it to all yeah. teachers please mm -hmm. any further discussion Call question, Mr. Chairman. Very good. We have the motion that has been seconded to uh, approve the device purchase and selling of the old uh, devices. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Carry 6 to 1. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. At this time, we will review the Board of Education meeting dates for 2018-19. Board members, you had this uh, in your packet. You looked over it, and we discussed it at the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting. Are there any further discussions on this calendar? Move to approve calendar as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve calendar as presented. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Calendar passes. Thank you, Board. At this time, we will move into the early college student calendar. Uh, I don't believe you're Miss Weiberg there, Mr. Armstrong. How are you? Good seeing you, sir. Mr. Armstrong will be Mr. Page, taking this Mr. Us. Johnson, members of the Board, uh, Miss Weiberg couldn't be here tonight, but I'm presenting for her the 2018-19 calendar for the early colleges uh, for the approval of the student days only for this coming fall. The first day beginning on August 7th, uh, the last day being May the 23rd. 
Board members, we pres were presented this at the uh, committee of the whole meeting. Uh, this get, does align with the Mitchell Community College calendar, which is necessary uh, for our early colleges. Uh, any further discussion on the early college? And we will be voting on the student calendar only tonight, I believe. Yes, sir. It says student days. That was right. the question I was going to ask. Those, those days in June, this is only the student calendar? Correct. We're only approving student calendar until after budget discussions. Yes, sir. Motion to accept the staff recommendation on calendar. Sir, B before we vote, may I? Is that uh, is that legal, Mr. Cute? Can we do? Can we accept the calendar without accepting the June part? Can we leave that out in, in a vote? Is that legal? I'm just asking. He proposed. He proposed in his motion that was from August 1st through May 23rd, the student's calendar. So that's all we were addressing on this calendar we're looking at. That's the way I took it for my motion. Could you add the word student in that motion, sir? Yes, for the student calendar. That's what we would say. Mr. Cote. Okay. That can be accepted. So just, just the calendar for students, you'll have to accept it for uh, staff yes. later on. Until after budget discussions. Uh, do we have a second? Yes. Charles Kelly on the second. Is there any further discussion? We have a motion and a second to accept the student calendar for early college, uh, our three early colleges that is aligned with Mitchell Community College. Is there any uh, further discussion? All in favor, aye. aye. Uh, opposed, no. Thank you. Student calendar passes. Mr. Armstrong, I believe you got a field trip to Denmark. I do. Um, I need to step back just a minute just to pick this. Okay, up. no problem. Yes, and I, uh, Mr. Page included the information uh, about the trip that you requested last Monday night. Um, Ms. Stephanie Harris uh, put this information together for me. And it basically answers all the questions about the trip that they've been taking since uh, this trip was first established during the 2007-2008 school year. That's an exchange program between. Now this is a legal exchange program, is that correct? That's correct. They have a Danish student that will spend time here for about a week and then our students go there. This is similar to our Chinese, is that correct? Chinese program, basically. Uh, Yes, in some ways it is similar. Yeah. Um, in other words, this is a school-sponsored trip. Absolutely. That's correct. Yes, sir. As an exchange, official exchange program. Yes, correct. sir. This has been used, this program has gone on for, do you know how many years? A little over, I think that about 10 years ago. About 10 years. First year, the first year. We do check with the uh, government to make sure all the uh, uh, if there's any warnings or anything. Yes, I did have a conversation with Mr. Uh, Gentle, and the, um, it's basically it's been about the same in Europe for travel over the last few uh, last couple of years. I think they're about a level two. But we will be checking uh, right up to departure. Right up until the time they go, because I remember uh, I remember a couple of years ago they did change. We, because we did we did postpone it. Yes, sir. Or did not do it one year, I believe. Or, right, or they delayed it one. I'm not sure. Yes, I can't remember when. Okay. Yeah, about two years ago, it was delayed by delayed. a month. Delayed, yes. Uh, because of the threat. Right, right. Here. As long as I just want to make sure that we are up up on that. Uh, it's uh, it's always scary when you're sending children somewhere. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the administration assured me that's what they're monitoring 24-7. Uh Chair would entertain a motion. Make a motion that we accept this trip to Denmark from Lake Norman area. Second. I have a motion to accept the, to approve the uh, field trip to Denmark, part of an exchange program, uh, and a second. Any further discussion, board members? Is there a way the board members could go? Uh, is there a cost to us in the school system in this? 
<laughs> okay, let's answer one question at a time. <laughs> no. First one's no. Oh, no, okay. I'm no, I'm pretty sure if you pay the money, you can go with them, yeah. Mr. Howell. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. Oh, wow. My question is, is there any cost to us in the school system? No, sir. Do we, do, what do we do if we have a student that uh, can't pay for this, that really wants to go? Well, uh, traditionally they have fundraisers to help these students, you know, during the time. I know the past experience that I've had, you may start a year back with fundraising. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? This time we'll vote on the... Uh, Approving the field trip to Denmark. All in favor, aye. aye. Uh, opposed, no. It is approved. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Thank you. Okay. Now we get into our policies. Uh, the first level of policies were all, I believe, second readings. Is that correct? Looks like all of them were second readings. Uh, is that nope of the first eight dr. Lassane you have second readings and then we have some F will be first readings so these that dr. Lassane will be discussing these eight are second readings and we will vote we will unless someone wants to pull a particular policy out we will wait to the end and vote on all eight policies thank you mr. page mr. Johnson members of the board um, You've had the opportunity to review all of the updated recommendations for policies. Um, you have the ones that are noted for technical changes only. For the ones that you're actually taking a vote on, I would like to remind us of um, the basic changes that are recommended for those policies. You have policy code um, 4040, 7310, which is staff student relations. And we talked about the fact that this is um, updated. There are several of the policies that are updated to um, reflect State Board of Education requirements regarding physical or sexual abuse of a child committed by a licensed employee. And there's all of the relevant um, connections to that policy. The second one is policy code 7130, and I did want to talk about that just because there were some questions regarding that policy. Mr. Page, I believe you were asking about the CTE instructors, and I, it is my understanding and my research that the State Board of Education is actually going, um, will potentially be making some changes to that. I don't know if that will affect that part or not, but in 73, 7130, under um, Section B, exceptions to license, licensure requirements, it makes references to pre-service training um, for adjunct CTE instructors who are not required to have a license. That training is centers around um, identification and education of children with disabilities, um, student behavior management, effective communication for dis diffusing and de-escalating disruptive or dangerous behavior, as well as safe and appropriate use of seclusion and restraint. Currently, those are still requirements, and I think that um, encompasses a lot of that 15 hours that you were asking a question um, regarding. So that's policy code um, 7130. In addition to that, it eliminates the lateral entry licensure information. Remember, we are moving to these residency programs, and so it aligns the policy for execution of those. It also modifies and relocates the emergency um, permits information um, as its own licensure category. We adjusted 7130R, remember just to catch up with all of the updates for that one. 7240 is the drug-free and alcohol-free workplace. Um, it makes this policy applicable to contractors, volunteers, as well as visitors. And you can see the other tenants that are listed there, including the requirement that employees notify both their supervisor as well as HR 
when the employee is convicted, and there was some discussion about that last week. Policy code 7510 is regarding leave. Okay, it's revised um, substantially to make sure that it aligns to um, areas. There were some areas that were duplicative, and it addressed that piece. It adds information for teachers who want to leave to work in a charter, regional, or lab school, as well as updating the references. Policy code 7530 was military leave. I think we got all the questions answered regarding that one and it just aligns to federal policy um, as well as um, adding the requirement that it benefits must be explained to the employee. It's the responsibility of the employer to explain that. Policy code 7810, evaluation um, of licensed employees. I believe Mr. Howe had a question about that with regards to assistant principal piece that is added. If you will go to that policy, I think this is rather important, 7810, and I believe it's the first page. Where it adds a piece about um, the principal or an assistant principal in the limited circumstances authorized by law. We have two schools that are in this category, and that is due to their size. And so this aligns directly to um, changes to general statute for schools that are over 1,500 students. And so in many of our schools across North Carolina that are over 1,500 students, they operate with small schools, almost like, um, like smaller schools with the assistant principal operating as a pseudo principal in those roles. And so this was specifically addressed in <clears throat> legislation to allow schools that are that large to have assistant principals operate in that capacity. Should we have all of our high schools come below that 1500, we would need to take that little provision out of our policy that gives us some flexibility. 7900 has to do with resignation. It's related to um, criminal history reporting and making sure that we're um, being ethical in um, our responses to inquiries regarding um, why, someone, why, why someone has left us. Policy code 7930 and 7940 are dual policies related to demotion and dismissal. And again, it adds those requirements um, that we have to heed to when individuals are asking for um, information regarding an individual's criminal history. Are there any questions regarding the second reading of these policies um, before we'll ask you for a vote? Mr. Page, um, I, I note that 7130, 7130R, and 7335, which Dr. Lassane reviewed, are not on the agenda. And probably um, you might want to ask the board to amend the agenda to allow the consideration of those as well. Were they technical corrections only? Or were they, they that that was what we corrected last time is that they weren't technical corrections. And I, I did that wrong because I did remove them off the agenda. Oh, okay. I missed where you removed those. Sorry. Yeah, they were not just technical um, corrections because of things that we had in our prior policy. I think we will probably uh, need a motion to, uh, from a board member to add those. Uh, well, just a crazy question then. I was just glancing. Are those two different policies or... Did she interchange the numbers? What are? Uh, no. Well, the 7310, she no, kept talking about 7130. 7130 is two no, separate ones. They're two. So oh, it, it, just got oh, it just no, got that, that, transposed. That, no, that's a du no, that's a dual policy. It is, but he was asking, was it transposed? No, those are two was different not. things. Oh, okay. We talked about it, too. Okay. Yeah, There's 7130 and 7130R. Right. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I'd like to include in uh, Section E, one through eight policies to add policies 
uh, that were discussed, 7130 and 7130R. And 7335. And, and what was oh, that? 7335. 7335. I didn't write that number down. That's my motion. Okay, I got a motion to add policy 7130, 7130R, and 7335 70. to the approval list. That would be listed as policies 9, 10, and 11. Is that correct? Is that your motion, sir? It is. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, board members, is there any discussion in adding 7130, 7130R, 7335 as items 9, 10, and 11 under Dr. Lassane's policies? No. What's the harm in waiting to next month to bring those up? I, I, that's a good question. Well, we talked about them in the, at the meeting with the stuff there, and then she just made the presentation on it. So I don't think there's any change. But and yeah. we addressed the fact right. last month that they were not um, they just technical changes. But I, I'm going to defer to our attorney. Uh, we did approve the agenda. Is uh, you're, you're allowed to change it. I think it requires a two-thirds two -thirds vote. vote. That was my yeah. thought. So if you, okay. if you yes. get a two-thirds vote to... Uh, you can amend it after it's been set. So that was my thought. Uh, do we need a motion to amend, or can we just add? We can just add that into the Mo this. motion. Motion to add, and so long as you get two thirds okay. of the people to say that. it's okay, good. then you're good All to right. go. And that's that was what I was thinking. Uh, at this time, we will, unless there's other discussion, we will vote on a policy. I mean, a motion to add. Uh, 7130, 7130R, and 7335. Remember, this takes a two-thirds majority to add these policies. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Those policies have now been added as number 9 is 7130, 10 is 7130R, and 11 is 7335. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, there is one policy, Dr. Lassane, that I did mention. Um, two to you and to the other board members during our CAL meeting. And it's uh, 7530, and it is in the second paragraph. And most of that paragraph has been removed except for that one sentence. <clears throat> and I made the statement, short periods of required active duty should be scheduled during vacation periods so as not to interfere with regular duties of the individual employment. Now, those of us been in the military, if an order comes down from on high, we say, yes, sir, and obey that order. And we may not have the choice. And I, I don't know that that's needed in there. So I'm going to ask if we can vote tonight to take that out before we vote for this particular policy. Mr. Howell, can you tell me again where you are? A second, it's a uh, policy code 7530, second paragraph down, and it's all been uh, lined off, lined out in red, except for that one sentence where it starts with short periods of required active duty. <coughs> so if the command says we're going, then and I'm part of that command. I don't have a choice, and I don't know that that needs, and I'm just asking the board to have that removed. We can vote for it, but I'm making a motion to remove that because uh, I've already stated in the cow meeting why, and uh, anyway, I, I made a motion. I have a motion to remove the short periods of required active duty should be scheduled during vacation periods does not interfere with regular duties of the individual's employment. Mr. Page, before you ask for a second, would, would, it, would, it, um, would it satisfy that, Mr. Howell, if they added something that said to the extent possible or something like that rather than, that, rather than taking it out? But, uh, okay, if that makes you happy. Well, I, okay, that's fine. It's what, uh, it's I, what I, makes I, you happy, but I, I think that might be a way to make everybody happy. Terry, you understand. Yeah, you ain't going to say, principal, I'll be here. I, uh, no, and that's sort of in, insulting the character of that teacher, in my opinion. And so, Mr. Howe, I think the rest, since the rest of that policy talks about all of those benefits, it's highlighting that 
I think the intent of that language there is because we also have to look at the continuity of education for students. And that was the intent of that statement well, being. And I respect that, but I don't know that this needed. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think the problem is the word required. Required. Mm -hmm. If it's required, they don't, they, I agree, they don't get to say it. I think if we, uh, I understand what you're saying. If someone has to go do some training, right. they might could take it in the summer or instead of take it. You know, they may have options. I understand what you're you're asking for. Uh, you could remove the word required. Uh, I, I, I would suggest optional short periods of active duty uh, should be scheduled during vacation periods as what was used. If applicable. If or I just as, as the, much as to, possible. To the extent possible. To the extent just, possible. Just let that be the introductory phrase to the whole sentence. Mr. Trow, I've not had a second. Do you want to withdraw your motion and no, make another I'll, motion? I'll second that. No. Okay, you second. Second. okay, I'm sorry. We have a second on it. Is that with or without? So, that with, the, withdrawal, with the amendment, to the extent possible. Okay, okay. That's did you. Uh, Re, redo your motion again for the chair to hear. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'm saying that this sentence, short periods of required active duty, should be scheduled during vacation periods so as not to interfere with regular duties of the individual's employment. I would like to see that removed, and I am now making a motion that it is removed. And Anna, you second that motion. Uh, I thought we were going to change it to the extent possible. We can second. We're going to have to vote this motion down. Yeah, we're going to have to go on that because that's oh, the way okay. it was. Or not, right. or not second so, it, yeah. We, we've, we, this motion has been made to remove the sentence completely, has been seconded. In any further discussion? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who, who, who seconded who second? it? I thought you did. No. Has not been seconded. I'm sorry. I thought you said you'd, you second the motion. That was the second part. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making my job hard tonight. <laughs> Good gracious. Uh, for the sake of voting, voting it down, I'll, I'll, as a veteran, I'll second Mr. Howell's motion. Thank you. Now we have it second. Okay. Any further discussion on removing the sentence completely? We are voting on a motion to remove the sentence completely. All those in favor, aye. Aye. All against, no. 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 The no's have it. Now. Okay, very good. The uh, nose raised their hand. Wait, you were yes. I'm going to pull with him. Oh, you said okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Maybe I, I was wrong it. then. All in favor of the motion, raise your hand. That's Bill. Okay, all yeah. opposed, raise your hand. Very good. Okay. Motion, Bill. Make the new motion. The motion, yes. Now I'll make the other motion. Who's making the other motion? That Bill. Go ahead. I'll make the motion that we amend at the end of the sentence to add to the extent possible. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to add to the end of the sentence to the extent possible. So to clarify, no optional at the beginning of that. Optional, optional short periods of takeout required. No, just that's not what the motion said. I, okay. I, then it's, yeah. I, I was hoping we would have a little yeah. more well, clarity. Requi it. See, required active duty might not mean um, show up this Saturday for right. six I, months. I, it I, might I, say yeah. by June the 30th, we want you to come in and do, uh, you're required to do some kind of training. And that's where there's the flexibility. I think this, uh, to the extent possible, Probably so cleans it up Mr. well enough. And, and the only part of discussion here is we're the Board of Education. I understand why it's in there. And it has nothing to do with any disrespect for the for the job of these military people who don't have the discretion to be able to change it. So I agree with, with Mr. Howe's point. But totally. for us as a school policy, it needs to say from our perspective, please, if you have an option, think of the kids and do it whenever you can not affect the school system. That's basically what I'm asking. So I agree with both sides, but I think if they, just to the point of extent, if they can, if they can't, then. There's not going to be many times they can, but there will be times that they do have to do training. And, uh, they well, can. the governor might call them up back to duty in an emergency state of emergency. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're gone. Yeah, they're gone. Yeah, absolutely. We do have several. We don't want to penalize them at all. No, we do have some Guard and Reserves. 
to, to <coughs> be done. So will that take care of them? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. That's that's federal when they call you up. Okay. And, and, well, local. Everybody in the administration does understand the difference between the National Guard and the Reserves, I hope. Right. Yes. Okay. Because that's important. We understand. Okay. National Guard belongs to the <laughs> governor. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. We have a motion and a second to add to the extent possible to the end of the Senate short periods of required active duty should be scheduled during vacation periods as not to interfere with the regular duties of the individual's employment to the extent possible. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Is that, that enough change, um, Mr. Uh, Coutte, is that enough change no, I to... Think, I think you can add that to the group that you could vote on. If you're going to vote on the second reading of the rest of them, you can include that. It's not enough change to I, I would, merit a, not the first and second reading. I don't, I don't think so. It didn't no, appear to me either, sir. Thank you. So that is, we can continue our vote on that. Oh, my goodness. Any other questions about any of these policies? <clears throat> Did we get a motion to approve them all? No, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, at this time, the chair would entertain a motion to approve the 11 policies that Dr. Lassane has presented to us on, tonight. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. We've got a motion and second to approve the 11 policies that I'll Dr. Start. Lassane has presented to the board tonight. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thank you, Dr. Lassane. Thank you. How about <laughs> that? Took us a couple of, couple of, <laughs> couple of m months, but we got it done finally. You on a roll? You just want to stay up there? <laughs> uh, now we're going to go back to uh, first, reading. first readings, which will not take a vote. And again, we have Mr. Armstrong uh, subbing for Mrs. Uh, Weiberg tonight. Thank you, Richard. You're welcome. Board of Education and Mr. Johnson, um, Chairman Page, I have policy 2310, public participation at board meetings. Basically, this policy would add procedures for public comment if there were not already addressed ISS policy. I know it talks about uh, the agenda and how to shape the agenda and adding public policy and setting standards for public policy, I mean public comments. Are there any questions about this policy? We reviewed this at the uh, uh, meeting. committee meeting, committee of the whole meeting the other day, and it was she had made a change, brought it back to us for a first reading. Any comments or questions, board members? Make a motion to approve as presented. We don't need a first reading. First reading. First reading. I withdraw my motion. <laughs> Very good. All right. Now, Mr. Armstrong, you have two policies of your own. Yes, a policy 4240-7312, child abuse reports and allegations, uh, first reading. This basically this policy adds reporting requirements for physical or sexual abuse of a child committed by a licensed employee in accordance with policy 4040 and 7310 staff student relations and existing state board of education policies. But it adds that a requirement right at the very bottom of the existing policy. That any administrator who knows or has reason to believe that a licensed employee has engaged in conduct which involves physical or sexual abuse of a child shall report that information to the state superintendent of public instruction. And this was done, I believe, by the State Board of Education Policy, so it's something that we will, we will have to do. Sir, are there any questions? And then the, the next policy, um, and this one's had several changes, policy 6125, administering medicines to students. Um, I remember last week there was a couple of places that Mr. Kennington mentioned where we needed to change, like physician to um, health care uh, giver. 
I'm pretty sure that's the terminology that was used, but all of those changes have been made. And if you all find other changes that have to be made, but I'm working closely with Ms. Karen Curley, and as those changes are brought to my attention, we're making them in the policy. And this this policy did go to our nurses, Ms. Yes, Curley, sir. and uh, they ha our nurses have re viewed this, and they are good with the policy as it is written. Is that correct? Extensively, and she's still working. Even after last Monday night, I went back to Karen. Mr. Kennington and I talked Monday, I believe, and, and uh, so I was making notes last Monday night and, and some uh, Tuesday. But the changes are up to date as we speak. The language. And it's, it's been, this policy has been uh, custom, customized to fit the Iredell States for Board of Education. I know we're taking it out, but as we're taking it out, let's spell physician correctly. All right, that's a good <laughs> point. I can't see that close, as I can, oh, but sorry. you see it, but. I know that's. Okay, any other questions, comments to Mr. Armstrong about these two policies? If not, thank you, Mr. Armstrong, and we'll see these back next month. All right, thank you. Dr. Taylor. Yes, sir. I have two policies for first readings tonight. Policy 3530, Citizenship and Character Education. This policy um, basically has some updates to statutory references, and then there's a lot of, of uh, information that's been marked out one place and inserted somewhere else. So they've just kind of tried to reorganize it so that it improves the clarity. Policy 4600 addresses student fees. It addresses some information and adds some information about fees for advanced courses and revises uh, some wording to improve the readability. So we did discuss these last Monday night. Be glad to answer any questions you may have. Comments or questions, Dr. Taylor? Thank you. Dr. Hussain, I believe you've got a teacher contract. I'm back. <laughs> As you heard last week, we had some members from the Teacher of the Year Forum who came forth and presented. Um, information along with myself on the recommended changes to teacher contracts. And this is pursuant to um, general statutes and the requirements, therefore, to um, change the way we administer um, teacher contracts. One of the key things that had to be addressed is whether or not Iredell State School Schools wanted to op offer a two and four year option um, on contracts. And so you have the detail here that is recommended by the committee. Um, you can see the detail for two-year contracts to meet the requirement of the General Assembly to be employed um, by ISS for three consecutive years. Proficiency across all ratings is a requirement. Um, you cannot be on any form of advanced um, growth plan whether it be a monitored, a directed growth plan, a mandatory improvement plan, or any other type of action plan um, that a supervisor might um, put an individual on to address deficiencies. Um, you can see that there can be no demotion, suspensions without pay, reprimands, warnings, or other disciplinary actions during the current or the prior um, school year and as well as kind of an open category of having no other performance um, or disciplinary um, concerns outside of that. The committee came forth for four-year contracts. They felt the individual should be um, employed with ISS at least five years, meet all of the criteria for the two-year contract, and possess at least one of the following, be accomplished, have a rating of accomplished um, in standards one and four, um, be licensed in a difficult staff to air, um, difficult to staff area such as right now for us that would be like math 
some foreign language areas that would have to be defined. National board certification, master's degree in a relevant area, or serve and an advanced leadership um, role as defined. And so that is the recommendation that has populated the um, template for policy code 7410. Are there any questions? Mr. Chairman, I'd, li I'd like to see some things added. <clears throat> I draw your attention to paragraph A on the first page, 7410. I would like some statement in there that would say that the administration would be responsible for informing teachers of any additional additions or changes to the law because you guys get the uh, policies first and uh, sometimes the pipeline doesn't have it. My other request is uh, in uh, paragraph B, I would like superintendent's recommendation, that is lined out part of that. I'd like to see that stay. And then on uh, sure. the uh, page four of five, I would like to see in paragraph D, I'd like to see that uh, uh, sentence that's lined out. I'd like to see that stay. So I'm not making a motion or anything, but those are some issues I'd like to bring your attention to. Uh, if you agree with me, great. Uh, but I think that uh, uh, any time we have a board policy, the, uh, we ought to be uh, explicit on uh, how we uh, tell teachers and what they're responsible for but what we're responsible for and I don't think that that uh, is very plain uh, just as I read it thank you so mr. how can I tell you what we have done because I don't know um, if you're aware of all that has gone on with teacher contracts we have been talking about the development of this policy since the fall there was information that went to every principal every assistant principal, as well as um, our certified and classified teacher advisory. Even though they're classified individuals, they're major funnels of information in a school building. And so they receive the classified staff advisory as well as the certified staff advisory receive the same information. We had a teacher of the year forum that involved a representative from each school and they had work to do as part of being involved in that forum to go back to that school and do feedback. From their first meeting, they received a copy that remains in a shared portal with them that is, is available for them to share with the entire staff as well as for the principals to share with the staff. I'm not sure um, that there's much more action we can do to make sure that teachers are informed about um, policy changes in sending that out, especially when there are also other um, ways that this has been communicated. So this has been an ongoing conversation for ever since the um, last budget bill was passed. I, I know you do a great job at that, mm -hmm. but 20 years from now when you retire, uh, I wanted to say in here what the administration's responsibility is because they may not feel like you. So that's what I'm saying is uh, I, I, I realize that, that you go above board in that area, but I don't know what's going to happen when you're not there. So, and I understand what you're saying. One of the things that I would encourage you to think about is dependent on how that's worded here then if anybody comes before you as a board that may have a non-renewed contract and they say, you say right here in your policy that you were going to do X, Y, and Z, then then I think you have to be aware of that also. That's just something, and, and Mr. Cute, you are one to speak to that way more than I am. Are these items that we could discuss next month? Yes, this is just for first reading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, all of the, and I hope, Ms. McCarrier, that you got those because I will need those. I'm not sure I got all of those that you said, but if we didn't, I'll contact you directly. 
Well, it's 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 uh, I, we we have a set of rules and regulations that we require teachers to abide by, and I think we need to include the administration from their their direct supervisor, the principal, up through the central office staff that what we're going to do to ensure you're successful, and that's basically what I'm saying. Um, so, uh, and I'm sure you could word that better than I. Okay. Could we'll I make work. a, since this is a first reading, yes. uh, and I think I get what you're wanting. I think I understand that uh, would, I'm thinking perhaps you meet with Dr. Lassane and then you write, y'all discuss it and then you can write up an option that you would feel comfortable with. Okay. Is that? Absolutely. I'll like follow up with you, Mr. Howell. And then we can, then you can run that by Mr. Coutte to see about the legality and even if we need to run it by the school board association. Absolutely. I think that then we would have a written. Would is that right? Would you, Mr. Howell? Yeah. Okay. okay. I think that would work. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not picking on you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, uh, we've gone through our first readings, and I'm going to turn the page now and see what else we've got. Uh, at this time, we are ready for our public comments. No public comments. Oh, we're getting good at that. All right, board member comments. Board members, uh, any comments? Uh Mr. Johnson, uh, if you recall uh, at our Committee of the Whole meeting, the uh, chairman asked me uh, to look into uh, JROTC, possibility of a JROTC school. And academy. Academy. And so I, I did start to do that, and then I thought, well, does the superintendent endorse this? So. I think before I really go any further than I've gone, I would like to get uh, your prayer and say, yes, it's okay, I want you to do this, something I can uh, endorse, or you, I'm not going to endorse it. So if you're not going to endorse it, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Mr. Howell. You know, we're very fortunate here in Arnold County to have four outstanding ROTC programs. And over the years, uh, we have tried and tried and tried to uh, add a fifth program. Lake Norman High School does not have an ROTC program. I have seen firsthand the tremendous benefit offered to our students that voluntarily participate in the ROTC programs. And uh, so, yes, I do wholeheartedly endorse the direction that you're going. I understand that this is a feasibility study and you may bring back a report that says you know, there's issues with this or it's cost prohibitive or whatnot. But I think any choice, and the key word there is choice, that we can offer to our children and to our parents only benefits us. So I'm all about expanding as many choices as we possibly can to our constituents. So I would uh, say to the board that uh, I have found a public military academy really close by in Richmond, Virginia. It's part of the Richmond, uh, Virginia school district. Uh, they have 300 and I think 399 students and they go 612. And there is a waiting list to get into that academy. Uh, I've got a, a, I played phone tag with the commandant today and have yet to speak with him. But uh, I may ask for your permission uh, to take a trip up there and talk to their superintendent, see if we can get on the right direction on how to do this. So I'll, I'll have more for you uh, at further meetings. Thank you. Uh, on the same note, uh, we spoke, I spoke, Chuck, I don't know if you were there or not with uh, uh, both uh, General Mowry and Colonel, our judge, Crosswhite. Crosswhite, yes. Uh, I believe maybe you were there, Cosby. 
Yes, you were there. That's what it was. And Sam, you, you were with us. And both of them seemed to be very much in favor of looking at this. They were rather excited about it. So uh, I'd like you and, and Mr. Uh, Gay, and uh, I think y'all should immediately, and they both had some names of some people that uh, they thought could be of <laughs> assistance. Costi's doing it. Yes. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Yeah. Costi. Oh, uh, Crosswhite did, Chuck. He, he, Any, he, he, knew some, he knew somebody. But anyway, they know some people that know people. You know how that goes. Uh, but uh, I think that would be one of the first places you guys need to set up a meeting with. And uh, Mr. Johnson, I'm sure you're, you're going to want to have a, I guess, a curriculum person from your system. So I, if y'all would just get together and try to get Absolutely. that some meeting, a meeting up and get your curriculum people and maybe uh, speak with our uh, ROTC. I'm excited about the possibilities of that, but, but, you know, it's maybe a long shot, but it's worth taking. That's right. So thank you. Other comments? I don't know if the rest of the board knows it or not, but um, I talked to Mr. Johnson today, and I think maybe you know it. We lost a really, um, I don't know exactly where I may get tied up when I say this, dedicated individual today. Um, early this morning, um, a friend of mine, actually he's a relative of mine, and uh, y'all have heard his name and you've seen him before, Dale Beatty uh, with Purple Heart Homes, passed away. He's 39 years old, has three children, and they're all in the public school system. And don't know exactly what happened, but um, he passed away this morning. And uh, he is a veteran and uh, went through a lot. And he, he supported the public school system here very, very much. And um, we're going we're gonna to miss him uh, not only as a community leader, but as a veteran and father. And uh, it's just, um, it hit pretty hard home. So um, y'all think about his family. And uh, I think the word you're using is an American hero. He was. Uh, the only other person I know that. And there's a lot of American heroes out there, but we've got another one like Dale Wilson. When you go off to war and lose two arms or two legs and one arm like Dale did, and then you come back and Dale lost two legs, I mean, you know, some gave a little, but some gave all. And there are a few that didn't come back at all. And uh, these guys were both, and I, I consider them both uh, Howard County outstanding citizens and both of them as heroes too. So, um, yep, I hate we lost him today. And like I said, 39 years old is extremely young. Um, to me, and so y'all keep his family in, in our prayers and what we do. So, just wanted to board in case y'all didn't know about that or whatever. So, um. okay, is it my turn? You can. Okay. Everyone in Iredell County is well aware of the issues that are now plaguing the city of Statesville. Last month, I attended the standing room only city council meeting in which citizen after citizen spoke of the crime issues in the city. I was in tears listening to a father of one of our children, a young girl from Cloverleaf, speak of that night when she was seriously injured in a shooting in South Statesville. Gangs, illegal drugs, and crime are now deteriorating the very fabric of some Statesville communities. High crime is just the result of other underlying issues. Poverty, drugs, and the breakdown of the family unit are some of the main catalysts driving this. These issues result in untrained workforce, prevent economic growth, drive down home values, lead to upper middle class flight, which leads to further poverty. Our city appears to be in a vicious cycle that must be broken. The most important part of a solution in stopping this cycle, in my opinion, is education. Most of our Statesville's low-performing schools are in Statesville. First and foremost, people need to understand that low-performing schools are made up of students who need extra support and care to reach their hidden potentials. Some prospective homeowners and business owners first look at the quality of schools and potential workforce. Overcoming the challenges of poverty and its correlation to low performance must be paramount to helping states will bring jobs and prosperity to all its residents. In addition to the challenges of helping all students of all backgrounds succeed, I quickly realized once on the board that schools are now being held responsible for societal issues like never before. Our schools are now required to provide mental health, nursing, 
physical therapy, speech therapy, counseling, and many other medical and social services to our students. The federal government and the state government require these services to provide only limited resources to do the job. Our little states of school is known throughout the state and even in the nation as a progressive and successful school system, well known for its quality of education and many choice options for children of all ages. The John Locke Foundation lists Idaho State Schools as one of the top schools, two school systems in North Carolina for giving the taxpayers the best education for money. In a recent Charlotte Observer article, the state superintendent of education recognized Idaho State Schools for its performance. The sad part is Idaho State Schools puts more money and resources in our poor performing schools than we do our more successful schools in other parts of the county. Based on average daily membership, average number of students per teacher, and average teacher salaries, Idaho State School spends well over a million dollars more in the schools located in Statesville than the system's average. In my opinion, if this community is serious about breaking the cycle of poverty, poor economic growth, growth gang and drug-related crime, education must be the center point of any long-term solution. Tonight, I'm asking for support from our Board of Education and our administration to increase our already Herculean efforts to bring these communities together for the benefit of all our children, especially those who live in poverty. With the support of this board, I would like for us to reach out to our citizens groups, churches, government agencies, youth groups, businesses, law enforcement, and the courts to join to join with us, our little states of schools, to find and implement possible solutions to these issues. It's going to take more resources, more time, and tough love to solve these problems. Over the next few months, I hope the community will begin accelerated efforts to address what we can do, the school system can do, in this community fight to bring back the pride and unity that the citizens of states will deserve. Thank you. Just a minute to piggyback on what you did. Now, Mr. Johnson may bring this up, but you know, last month we talked about advertising for our schools. Did most of y'all get a flyer like this in the mail? School Choice North Carolina. Did y'all get one? No? Maybe I'm one got one. But anyway, there's school choices, put down a lot of money for school choices. But then again, we, re I won't say retaliate, that's not a good word. We have bounced back with like Lake Norman, Lake Norman Elementary, and some of our other schools. So we're advertising, and I still say the public school is the best money for the bang and the buck. So you're getting other choices out there, but our schools are fighting back. I guess is the right way I should say it, advertise. So we need to keep advertising for our schools exactly what you said. And uh, we do have a great system. Any other board comments? Mr. Johnson, comments? Thank you, sir. I've got a few slides to share with you tonight. Last August, uh, myself and Dr. Tim Brewer from Mitchell Community College and Dr. Stephen Mooney from Mooresville Graded School System was invited to attend a presentation to the county commissioners on economic development here in our community. And at that meeting, <clears throat> we heard from some very distinguished presenters, folks like David Bradley, the president of the local chamber, uh, Russ Rogerson, who is the uh, president of the economic development here in the in the community, and uh, at the meeting that day, it was it was pointed out that there are hundreds of jobs in the community that are available. Many of these are advanced manufacturing jobs, and that many of the local businesses do not have candidates to interview for these jobs. So at the meeting that day, um, the three education leaders and the County volunteered to pull together a group and begin working on what we called a blueprint uh, that would create a plan, a systemic plan for our community going forward uh, so that we can make sure that the 2,000 children that are graduating from our high schools in this county each year 
uh, are aligned to the needs of the community and that uh, we are creating that pipeline of workers for these jobs. Many of these jobs are very high paying jobs that uh, require only two years of training at the community college level. Uh, we have met this winter, this picture that you see there is a group of students that attended our blueprint meeting back in December. That group has pretty well finished their work now and is ready to uh, begin drafting a final plan which will be presented to the Board of Education as well as our county commissioners later this spring. Uh, we challenged ourselves to be extremely innovative and creative. Uh, we challenged ourselves to begin early in this process. We need to start having conversations with children as early as sixth grade about the career opportunities that are available now. Um, we need to also engage our parents because many parents aren't aware of the many opportunities that are available uh, to our children now in the new economy. So very soon, you will be seeing a presentation on our blueprint, and then later in the spring, we'll be taking that to the county commissioners for their approval as well. But it's good, solid work, and I think you're gonna be very excited about some of the systemic changes that will take place in our school system as we retool and retrain counselors, engage our parents and our students, and work in tandem with the businesses in our community. We're very excited about this project. Um, January 25th, uh, you can see some very excited students there at NB Mills. Uh, former Statesville resident John and Mary Anderson uh, generously gave a piano uh, to the school. Uh, as, you, as you remember, last year, um, NB Mills uh, had a student, um, one of our early college students, that took it upon herself to remodel and revive the uh, auditorium there. And missing was a piano. So we do want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Anderson for the beautiful piano that they donated to the school and thank them for uh, their support of public education. The piano and the concert were both made possible uh, by the collaboration of the Anderson family, the Rotary Club of Greater Statesville, <coughs> Dove House, and the Performing Arts of Ireland County, all great partners of the school system. January the 26th, I got to attend an event at uh, Cottle Creek. Uh, they called it Diversity Night. This is a group of the Indian students that attend Cottle Creek. And you would be surprised at how large a population that is. Yeah, very surprised. Um, I was very impressed with the presentation. This is its second year, and the principal announced that night that they have outgrown the facility at Cottle Creek for the presentation. They'll be moving to the Charles Mack Center next year to accommodate the overwhelming crowd that attends this event. Another very exciting piece of news uh, coming from Cottle Creek, they had their site visit last week by the visiting team from the International Baccalaureate Program. Uh, the, the faculty and staff was very excited, uh, even a little nervous about their, their two-day visit. So later this spring, you will be getting a report uh, from the visiting team and we're pretty confident that these guys are going to do very, very well. And uh, by, by June, July, uh, Iredell County will have its first primary year program of international baccalaureate. And as a reminder, the folks out at Cloverleaf have just begun this journey. Uh, they had their staff training back in January, so they'll be going down this same pathway. But we're very proud of the folks at Cottle Creek and wish them well with their journey. Um, I missed the spelling bee this year. We got busy on some issues, but Dr. Taylor was there, and those are our winners of the spelling bee that was held last week at Statesville High School. And I understand that it went uh, 31 rounds. Is that right? So I, I know they had to take a bathroom break for the kids so that they <laughs> could go to the restroom and whatnot. But we've got some extremely bright children in our school system, and there are two of them that stood out at the event that day. Yeah, can't even spell it. <laughs> yeah. um, this past weekend, our students in the Chinese Cultural Exchange Program arrived here in the Statesville Iredell County community. There's 141 of them that will be visiting with us for the next couple of weeks. And we would love for you to mark your calendar. Uh, the kids have a, a big event planned for you this 
this Saturday. Here is your, your formal invitation. Uh, it will be on the campus of Statesville High School from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. You don't have to come and stay for the whole event, but you can drop in anytime, and you'll see a variety of activities taking place, not only with our Chinese students, but some students from the Iron Statesville schools as well. Um, in China, they're celebrating their New Year's uh, this weekend. This is the year of the dog in China. So in commemoration of the, of the uh, uh, favorite pet, man's best friend, you can bring your dog to this event Saturday. <laughs> there is going to be a little dog parade. And so we hope that you can at least drop by Saturday and take this event in. And it may be the home of the Greyhounds. That's right. Very appropriate. Very appropriate. We'll point that out. <laughs> let me let me add. If you've not been to that, that is one of the greatest shows on earth, right there. It is a lot. It, it really is. Uh, it's a great great program they put on. The uh, Mr. Johnson. The um, this year they've elect, the cats uh, culinary program is going to be doing the food. Uh, for sale, so it's a fundraiser, and uh, our friends at Tower Bridge have said, uh, "No, you know, just just come in, no charge for using the facility. All you make can go back into the program." So they're apparently uh, very excited about that, and ha we'll have a very captive audience of several hundred folks to yes. feed that day. Excellent partnership with the cats. Uh, board, I'm passing out to you here a copy of our strategic plan. You're very, very familiar with our strategic plan. The plan is developed uh, with our principals, assistant principal, our central office staff. Uh, we do electronic surveys to help us gather data on our plan. It's a three-year plan. And uh, we recently held our mid-year review last Friday for our staff members. Your mid-year review is scheduled for March the 11th, 2018 at ADR from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock where we will be going through uh, all of the objectives embedded in our strategic plan. Uh, this is also an, an important year for us in the, in the cycle of our strategic plan. Uh, the strategic plan will be coming to an end, uh, this cycle, uh, this, this school year. So in, in June, uh, we will need to take a look into the future, the next three to five years, and see what we would like to make as the priorities of this school system. Mr. Page, I think this aligns perfectly with the comments that you shared just a few minutes ago about addressing the uh, schools that are struggling here in the Statesville community and our focus on poverty. So, board, for, for your consideration, uh, we are opening up our strategic planning process this year to the entire community. This will be the first time that we've done that. But we would like for you to mark your calendars on April the 30th uh, through May the 1st at the Unity Center. Uh, we're going to have a day and a half retreat um, where we celebrate uh, our strategic plan. But we also delve deep into the data of our school system, identify our strengths and our weaknesses, and more importantly, ask our community. And these are businesses, these are parents, these are stakeholders throughout the community, you can invite folks to attend this, this uh, planning retreat. And we're going to ask them to help us draft the next three-year strategic plan for our school system. And so we're hoping that city council members will be there. We're hoping that county commissioners may be in attendance. Business leaders will be there. Parents will come. <coughs> but mark your calendar again, April the 30th through and May the 1st at the Unity Center. And those will be day-long events. Um, eight to five. Or so. we, we will probably start about 9 o'clock and go to about 4. And that way it will leave a little bit of time for folks to go back to their businesses and conduct some business. Thank you. You'll get a, you'll get a formal invitation for that a little bit later on in just a few weeks. Here's an upcoming event, too, that we want to call your attention to. And that is the Chamber event. The uh, Wards Banquet is coming up very quickly, February the 20th. If you haven't reserved your seat, Please let Kelly know. We'd love to have you there that night, along with some of the other district leaders and some of our principals and whatnot. That event is at the Civic Center as well and starts at 6 p.m. Last uh, week, we were made aware of this 
uh, training that is being offered here in the Statesville community. Uh, Marvin Norman, one of our county commissioners, came by and shared this information with us. But uh, this is being sponsored by the Juvenile Justice and Crime Prevention Council here in our community. The title of the training is Rep Relationships, Respect, and Resiliency Summit. It's scheduled for Monday, March the 12th at the Statesville Civic Center. We have attached an agenda for you so that you can see throughout the day all of the uh, various breakout sessions and whatnot. We're encouraging our principals and assistant principals, teachers, counselors to attend this event. From 11 o'clock to 5 o'clock is the professional uh, providers portion of that. And then from 5.30 to 7.30, there is a parent round table. And so we do hope that our little statesville schools will be well attended and represented at this event. It is a very timely topic. Uh, Mr. Page, you referenced some of the, some of the issues that we're addressing community-wide uh, here in the statesville community. But there's topics on there like bullying and sexting and uh, how to better serve our kids and keep them on the straight and narrow. We also realize that teen suicide has become a topic, unfortunately, that we need to talk about in our community. So uh, good training, and again, we hope that ISS will be well represented at this event. Same day as our board meeting. That's the same day as our board meeting. Board yep. time. Exactly. Already talked about our strategic plan, and there is the uh, dates for the retreat that we'll be having on April the 30th through May the 1st. I also want to take just a few minutes tonight to uh, commend our members of the General Assembly. You know, you guys held your legislative breakfast back in December, and one of the one of the uh, recommendations to come out of our breakfast that day was for the General Assembly to take a take a look at the class size legislation. And as you know, last Friday, um, the General Assembly did pass and the governor signed House Bill 90, which now delays the class size by a full year and calls for a three year phase in of those new class sizes in grades K through three. It also authorizes $60 million to pay for enhancement teachers. And that was one of the concerns that we had all along that we were going to be asked to sacrifice our enhancement programs like art and PE and music at the expense of driving down class sizes. So we're very thankful that our message was heard and that the General Assembly did take action on this. From a budgetary um, angle, um, this removes $2.7 million from our request to the county commissioners. So I shared this today with the new county manager, our acting county uh, manager, and she was delighted to hear this. <laughs> I think all across North Carolina, this relieves a lot of stress and a lot of pressure on local government as well. And so those 48 teachers that we were asking for, we can delay that now for a bit, and it will be phased in. Uh, I think this gives us time now to take a deep look at how we as a community can address this as it rolls forward. But again, all of the members of our delegation supported this legislation, and so I want to thank them for listening and for taking action on one of the biggest financial burdens to, to uh, come our way in many, many years. Board, I also would like to thank you for approving our technology refresh tonight. Um, I heard all of your concerns and comments about staying in touch with you and bringing back samples of this work and making sure that all of our teachers were deeply engaged in the technology. And I hear you loud and clear on that. We will do that. Uh, our next step in this process is to present this plan to the county commissioners on February the 22nd at their regular meeting. So that night, myself and Mr. Page, uh, Ms. Wyck, uh, probably our folks that presented to you, Dr. Blattner and Dr. Taylor, will all be in attendance at the county commissioner's meeting, and we'll do our best job uh, to get their support uh, for this for this lease. What was that date again? I believe they're having a retreat on the 22nd, 23rd. Um, I think it's the 22nd, the night of the 22nd. Third. Probably the 20th. Uh, the, uh, the tu Tuesday is the 20th. That's probably no, when they make. I think they moved the 20th because of the. Oh, oh so that's why it's the 22nd. 
Well, 26 on Thursday. They're having a retreat at Cats. Are they having a meeting that night on Thursday instead of Tuesday? Probably part of the retreat. I, I don't know. We'll double check the date for yeah. you and let you know. Let we'll date you know. Yeah. Check on that because their retreat is Thursday and Friday, the 22nd, 23rd at Cats. So they we'll, we'll be glad to double okay. check on that for you and let All you know right. the exact date. Um, Board, I also want to give you uh, accolades uh, on your permission to study our calendar flexibility. You know, last week at the Cal meeting, you guys took a, a big step in allowing the staff uh, to look at a year-round calendar for the 2019-20 school year, and that's something that we will be presenting to members of the State Board of Education, and we'll do our very, very best to build a lot of consensus and support for that. So very soon, uh, no later than late spring or early summer, we'll be bringing back our feedback from the State Board of Education on that endeavor. But I do thank you uh, for the permission to be creative and innovative and think out of the box. <coughs> last, um, last week, we met with a group of homeschool parents. Last Tuesday night, it was sponsored by South River Baptist Church. And I'm happy to say that we probably have close to about 20 K-5 students now signed up for our elementary version of the I Academy. As you know, five years ago, we opened the I Academy, the first school of its type in North Carolina that partners with home schools. And that uh, program has been very successful and is well attended now. We, we're averaging over 100 home school students in middle and high school each year. And so here is some information. I give that to you and ask you to share it with any commu community member or parent that you know of that is uh, homeschooling their children in grades K through 5. And we're very excited about this endeavor. Mr. John Ribbick, our elementary curriculum director, is heading up our efforts here. As you look at the information, it will answer some of the questions for you. But we told the group last week that we would come back and address and talk to any group of parents uh, throughout the entire community. If they can get us an audience together, we'll come out and make this presentation. Um, we do feel like that uh, by partnering with homeschool parents, we can offer the best of both worlds. Let those parents keep their homeschool, continue to do what they do best, but there are some services that we can provide that will support and help the homeschool parents. So that's just a little snapshot of some of the things that are going on in, in the district. And again, we thank you for your leadership and uh, thank you for the opportunity to serve the kids in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, as in every month, it's just amazing when we uh, look at all the opportunities that our system provides the youth of Iredell County. Uh, I think we do an excellent job. Uh, you've got some dates at the end of your February 28th, early release day, 5th committee to hold meeting, March 5th, March 11th. Our uh, mid-year review at ADR from 1 to uh, hopefully no later than 5 o'clock. Uh, March 12th is our board meeting. And March 12th is also a student's no makeup day. Uh, we have a agricultural alumni banquet. Monday night, the 19th. Okay, I didn't. Monday. Next Monday, the 19th, at the Ag Center. Six o'clock. So, uh, board members, I hope all of you got an invitation to that. If you didn't, uh, mark your calendar. That's always a a, a good meeting to uh, see some of our agricultural students and what they're they're doing. Uh, be sure you uh, know about that. There's uh, also an Ag Forum that's going on the 26th. It'll be a bit more tired. Oh, did you not hear it? Well, I just want it on the. Yes, um, there's a, also an Ag Forum on in uh, at North Idle High School on the 26th. I believe it's it's seven o'clock, but I'm not sure. I, I, I'd have to relook at the time. But the uh, it is sponsored through with the uh, Mitchell in the uh, early early Ag college. Group. Yeah. So it's on the 26th. I remember seeing the email on it. Thank you for yeah. reminding us of that. Uh, it's getting the time of year we'll be having a lot of, there'll be a lot of meetings going on. So uh, any other 
uh, comments? If you're, well, in case you probably didn't read it, tomorrow uh, town of Troutman's having an open house. They, you know, we have SROs, and they patrol our schools there, so if you get a chance from 6 to 8 tomorrow night, there's an open house at Troutman at the town tomorrow night. And, um, and don't forget Wednesday, it's a special day, and uh, we have two retired school teachers just happened on Johnson's greenhouses, so Wednesday happens to be Valentine's, in case some of you some of y'all get tired, look like you don't want to go home or something. But Wednesday is Valentine's Day, so if you happen to get out of Johnson, watch some cannon doors. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't forget. Any other comments or questions, Mr. Johnson? We do not need a closed session. Oh, we don't thank, thank Dr. Lassane for her appreciation that we had to reschedule. But thank oh, you, your right. staff, for the appreciation for the board that y'all had for us uh, the luncheon, luncheon or get together, whatever we had, it was good. <laughs> If you'd like to bring another one of those cakes back any time, just yeah, well, be we, glad to, you know, at, at, uh, to have one. The committee of the whole meeting for dessert, one of those lemon pound cakes would really, really be good. So I went back to get a piece, and you'd already hit it by the time I got back in there. Uh, if there's no, go for it, Charles. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Got a motion and a second to adjourn. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. I oppose no. We are adjourned. Thank you. We tried to set a record, but we didn't quite make it.